This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 646 from March 9th, 2020. Depression of my own making. The bad told me will not be better. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast, your best resource for all the breaking F1 racing news. I'm your host, Boston. <laughs> Joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hello. And the Nimp. Hey. Uh, Patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones are numbers, all the cool behind the scenes, early access, and uncensored F1 news. <laughs> an, an hour verse actually uh that you uh definitely want we have a brand new episode of outcast every week this is the uh the completely uncensored before we record sort of stuff we're just mm-hmm. sort of sitting around shooting the poops um and talking about whatever is going on in our lives uh, like how tired we are because of daylight savings that devil uh daylight savings yep uh patreon.com slash e1m on the five dollar a month tier is a recommended one that gets you everything for only five bucks a month um i think that's it so let's get started with you moon okie doke oh it's not like i've got like 12 games to talk about this week but luckily one of them is a game club one of them is a movie for special projects wink wink um uh, boy i i got really sick this week and it was one of those things was like one day i'm like yeah i I, it's it's allergies it should be fine the next day i was like oh no i'm this is this is real bad Stardew Valley was really good to me this week. Yeah, <laughs> and it's also a very good time to be feeling sick in general. You know, yeah. no, no issues to concerns to be worried no about. No pressure that at all. Mm-hmm. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> nope, nothing at all. Uh, so I'm going to start yeah. with The Sims Four. Oh, <clears throat> so yeah, you and my wife been playing that now or what? No, <laughs> Sims Four is real good. No, uh, I haven't played it on console, but fortu- it's real good. Fortunately for me. Somebody released uh, an achievement guide on how to get every achievement in The Sims 4 in not 80 hours, but mm. two. Uh, oh, okay. So I went in and played The Sims 4, and by played, I mean I got every for... single achievement in the game. <laughs> I, I played The Sims 4 for two hours. Yes. <laughs> and I'm glad I did, because as much as I love The Sims 4, I don't think... I, well, sorry, correction. As much as I love The Sims, conceptually... Mm. Right. I don't think I like The Sims 4. Sims 4 is divisive. And it's I, honestly, it's not the game's fault. The last Sims mm-hmm. game I played before this was The Sims 2 on Game Boy Color, which was a cool story mode <laughs> game, which was actually really amazing. Yeah, that was a cool different game. And it was like a murder mystery and all kinds of other stuff going on. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. Whatever. Now I'm going to space. I'm sure. Why not? It was Final Fantasy IV. The Sims on the Game Boy Color was really, really good. <laughs> like, yeah. so weirdly good. But yeah, what happened to The Sims? Because now, your needs mean nothing. Nothing. Yeah, the, I, I think that's one of the biggest frustrations about 4, is like the the people simulation side of it has been minimized in favor of careers and friendships and the the town really mattering and i think i think that's kind of a bummer it's it's interesting i mean don't get me wrong i've I've watched giant bombs um 13 sims to die or whatever it's called 13 deadly sims which is really good like i watched that and it's like cool seeing it and stuff like that but i just assumed i was missing something because you know i'm not abby who has put a million hours into the sims which By the way, I love the fact that she's doing a 100 Sims challenge, 100 Sims baby challenge or whatever it is. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. And there is someone else who streams The Sims 4 called Abby, who's using oh. the exact same hashtag. Oh. <laughs> and a whole bunch of people po- posted like gallery things for them to, for her to download for this challenge or something. <laughs> and this mm-hmm. other Abby, not Giant Bomb Abby, was just like, what happened? Because all of a sudden my hashtag is <laughs> full, like hundreds and hundreds of th- new designs in this hashtag. What happened? Well, That's really who good. would have known that there was a game, another another girl called Abby who looks exactly like me, 
who happens to be <laughs> streaming the same thing. It's like, okay, sure. Wow. It, Man. It was great because the two of them started interacting on Twitter and it was hilarious and cute. Um, anyway. Moodlets. What are moodlets? Who knows? I don't know what a moodlet is. Not sure I even know anymore. Mm-hmm. It feels like I'm... L- it feels like I'm trying to get into Formula One for the first time playing Sims 4. <laughs> Everything changed. Everything yeah. changed. I was like, no, I just need to go to the toilet, make some food, get some sleep, go to work, get promoted, get a job, come home, go to the toilet, get some sleep, get a shower, yeah. go to work. It's like me watching Formula One where it's like, mm-hmm, differentials. Yep, mm-hmm. I know what that means. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. It's like, gotcha. I, I, everything <laughs> changed. And I love the way yeah. it looks. And they've done a surprisingly good job of the controls on the, on the console version. And mm-hmm. I love their interactions, and I still love the stupid gibberish Simlish. Um, <laughs> yes. It's still so good, and I will still forever love Katy Perry for doing a cover of her own song in Simlish for Sims 2, I believe yep. it was. It's really good. It's how they've done that, it, it, like, the, all of that stuff is great, and the game looks great and and fantastic and stuff, and I I think I'm too old for The Sims. I, 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 there's this thing that happens with Sims that I always, I have, for the longest time I suspected what happens with the Civilization games happen with the Sims, where it's like, Civ 6 comes out and everyone's like, yeah, but it's not as good as Civ 5, like, I have 400 hours in Civ 5, Civ 6 isn't as good, Civ 7 comes out and they're like, yeah, but it's not as good as Civ 6, like, I've I've had 700 hours since Sims. I always think that happens with some of these longer running series where like Sims 4 came out and everyone's like, it's not as good as Sims 3. But that that opinion has persisted mm-hmm. over the years where it's like Sims 4 has done a lot of cool stuff and a lot of the larger expansions and some of the smaller ones. Yeah, the three uh, different it, types of DLC packs doesn't help. It's complicated. <laughs> um, but like all of that stuff has done a really great job at continuing to expand and evolve the game but so many people are still like but sims 3 sort of did the sims better without losing sight of some of the stuff that the sims 4 did mm-hmm. um, and i i feel like it's interesting because that that opinion has persisted where usually be like eh, it's no sims 3 but it's come a long way and it's 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 good on its own right everyone's sort of like hmm yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe I just need a more of a basic B kind of game, because mm. the best Civ game is Civ Rev. I don't have time Civ Rev for great. all the other stuff around that. I don't have time <laughs> for everything else. Give me Civ. It's Rev. why Risk Factions was so good on the Xbox Live Arcade. Mm-hmm. I have twenty minutes. I don't have five hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I'm. I like I said. I think I'm too old for The Sims. I think I don't have enough time. I don't have the yeah. mental capacity to try and remember right and left camera inverts because it doesn't save my stupid thing. Of course it doesn't. Why not? Yeah. It's a it's a good game. Conceptually it's great. I just mm-hmm. don't think it's the game for me. Because right. I have aspirations of my own. I don't want to make this sim a rock star when I can barely get out of bed in the morning. Right, your your sim is podcasting in the game, and it's like this is too close to home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next thing you know, I've got two people living in the house with three cats, while one of them doesn't spends all of their time podcasting. The other one becomes a pro game player. It's just like, <laughs> right, <laughs> your in game wife t- decides to pick up Rainbow Six Siege, and you're like, wait a second, mm-hmm. I don't need that. I, 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 <laughs> There's a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> I don't. When I was younger, I liked the idea of turning this little digitized version of me into something special. Mm. Now I'm older and wiser. I know I'll never be anything special. And <laughs> making... <laughs> we're millennials. We're, we're honest about our futures. <laughs> making the small digitized version of me better than me is not something I'm really interested in in this late age of my all life. It's, all it's doing is punishing yourself. Exactly. You know, this Sisyphean task. I, I could have been a movie star if only I had, you know, read more books. If only I had right. researched more on the computer. I could have been a movie star. No. I, no, you're a millennial. Sit back down. <laughs> because the, the issue I have here is I always make myself. I cannot help it. Even, it okay. If it's Mass Effect, I'm going to play as the default character because that's the person they have put in the game. Also because right. the... Joe White dude. Yeah, also because, you know, yeah. the if you do custom characters in those games, they just look like monstrosities. 
Um, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> if it's a create a character thing, I default to making myself. That's changed okay. recently over the past couple of years or so. I'm getting more into doing other things, diverse things. I'll play as a female. I'll do this. I'll do that. Whatever. But in general, if it's a game like this where it's about real cat, real quotation marks, life. Right. The Sims is real, man. Then <laughs> I'm going to make myself and it's going to just depress me to make myself this right. world famous author. And I'm sitting here. Look at this giant house you live in, Stephen King. It's like, oh, no. Exactly. I don't. I don't. Take the VR headset off. I don't need to cause myself more depression by making a digital version of me better than me. Right. That's why I have my gamer score. It's the one thing I can be proud of in my life. <laughs> well, <laughs> cause... apart from my wife and cat children, that's the sure. one thing I can that's be given. proud of, of myself. Yeah. I say, because my wife mostly plays it because she likes the building aspects in it, mm-hmm. which mm. is why I haven't had a PC title in the games that I've played in the last how many months now? Yep. Because... <laughs> Yeah, but she she has like our entire entire family built out, including pets, and wow. she we got it for free on Origin. Mm-hmm. And originally, she didn't want to play it because she has all the expansions for Sim One. I still have them in my closet. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and she's like, "I'm not going to buy any expansions." I'm like, "All right, fine, whatever." And then the holiday sales hit, mm-hmm. and then everything yeah. was like twenty dollars or less. And she's like, "Well, I really want this one." I'm like, "All right, pick it up." She's like, "But I yeah." But it's like, you don't have to explain it to me. Just buy it if you want it. I don't care. <laughs> You've already put 400 hours in. You're going to exactly. put 400 more. Just spend the 60 bucks. She gets real into, she will look up house plans online, and then she will build them in the game. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool, though. Yeah. That's really so, cool. Yeah. I, that's her big thing. I, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a, that's really cool. Like, my wife does something similar. Like, my wife will, like, she will create people and, like, have fantasy storylines, her own and I know Boston doesn't like this word, headcanon for yes. the people that she has. Like, this is right. Gloria Cheesebro, and she lives in this house. She's 96 years old, and she has four granddaughters who are all vying after her will, but what's going to happen? Like, my wife will create her That's own cool. stories. Yeah. I can't do that because I'm not writing it. I can't do that in my mm. own head. I can do that in words on paper. I can't, sure. I can't do that in a game, kind of. Not as wholly original as that at least you need the sims to follow the script yeah <laughs> i've written the story just follow the story yeah exactly and in my case the story is don't be better than me you little punk right you know there is a cat trying to get into my office so that's kind of cool um <laughs> but yeah it's the sims 4 i got all of the achievements in it and i uninstalled it because what awaited me there was depression of my own making and i don't want to go down mm-hmm. that road any more than i have to thank you very much that's right oh But anyway, (laughs) yes. Sorry, I'm getting Sims flashbacks. Um, The shocking one for me this week, I'm going to save the best till last. I played a visual novel today, today, yesterday. Uh, I'm excited to hear which one it is. Don't be, don't be. Ten, take that excited meter and just dial it all the way back to zero. I thought you were going to say, like, I played 428, and it's like, hell yeah. No, dude, I played Danganronpa. No, I didn't. Don't get excited. Don't don't get excited. (laughs) I don't know if you'd like Danganronpa. I'm not sure. I didn't even want to finish that sentence without immediately turning the off switch on your excitement down. (laughs) You could see me getting excited and then just watch my heart crack in half. Exactly. I don't want to do that to you. No, I played Three Faults Home. Three Fourths Home? Mm Mm-hmm. Pro tip, Boston. This is a Kingdom Hearts game? <laughs> <laughs> no, there weren't enough symbols in the title. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Although, three Hearts Home Kai. Technically, if you load up the game, it is three slash four home is the actual okay. title. Um, don't play this, Boston. Just don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd say that from the genuine bottom of my heart. This was probably picked up at some point by either me or my wife. I love you, darling. As a one, an easy 1,000 game. And it is. Oh, okay. Number one, it is. Number two, Raticala Games. Shout out. Ten visual novels coming to the Xbox soon. Thank you very much, Raticala Games. Looking forward to that. Um, so, visual novels. Do you ever have to just hold one button throughout the entirety of the game? No. Why would they have you do that? Because you have to hold the right trigger throughout the entirety of the game. For, or else to, what? The bomb goes off? No. Yeah, like to do what? <laughs> You're driving a car. Oh, no. And I'm sure you, I saw you Google it, so I know you're already looking at screenshots and what it looks like. And I was trying to, and it's something that's very hard to Google. Um, 
it use the full words. Use three word, fourth word, home word. Okay. Um, I had written it down wrong. And um, yeah, it's basically a two. You, you remember the early South Park episodes with the paper cutouts? Uh yeah. Imagine that in two tones, three tones, black, white, and gray. Really, really simple. You're driving a car home. You're getting a phone conversation with your mother. <laughs> Sorry, Jim, Jimbo Jangles in chat says, Desert Bus, a novel. <laughs> Not wrong. Not too far off? Not at all. Because you are driving the car, so you hold the right trigger to accelerate the car. If you let go of the right trigger, the car stops and it goes into the pause menu and the conversation doesn't continue. Mm, okay. If you hit A over and over and over again... It does nothing. You need to cycle between the person you're speaking to on the phone and yourself with X to shift it to your side, A to confirm a selection. Goes back to them, X to shift it to your side, A to confirm a selection. The story is Uh, average at best. It feels like it was written by an 8th grader. I don't know how old 8th graders are. Sorry in advance to all 8th graders who might be listening. It feels like like a... like a kid's first visual novel or kid's first story, short story, essentially. Right. To the point where in the actual visual novel, it has a kid's first short story in it. Interesting. No, it's not. Correction. (laughs) Conceptually, there's really good ideas in place here. Really, really solid ideas. Really simple mechanics, you're driving home, you've got the thunderstorm, you've got a tornado possibly coming in, you've got really good sound effects to go with it. Zero voice acting, all text-based, that's fine. When you speak to your younger brother, he is probably on the spectrum at some point, but I don't. it never goes into details. But he starts mm-hmm. reading you a story he's written, and it's a really good story. His section is a really good story, really well written, and the sound effects do a good job of fading out and, like, like kind of being a little bit absorbing in that sense and then the game ends <sighs> there is <laughs> basically there is zero closure for the game which right in a game like life is strange if you never have to make that last decision and it just cuts off before you make that last decision that's good that's a what if scenario what if this sure you built that to happened? that point this is 45 minutes of attempting to get well sorry 20 minutes of attempting to get you to care about your character your Mm -hmm. mother and father and your younger brother and then about 20 minutes of your younger brother telling a story and then the game ends Hmm. all the while holding the right trigger that's the part that sucks the most because it you don't need it no like it's nothing like you know the the canneries the famous cannery section in edith finch mm-hmm. you're you're doing two things at the same time because it's important to the story the gameplay and the story are matching up perfectly, perfectly in yeah. that in Jinx. that portion and i still don't want to spoil it because i, I want people to go play edith finch thank you Slug, something for like taking this. our advice on that by the way a uh, yeah. friend of the show, Slug Jones, um, saw us all posting about our best games of this generation, and Edith hit like five of us, and he went and played yeah. it based on that alone, and then got a thousand yes. gamer score in it. Ah, oh, game is so good. Um, but like in a visual novel, in something, and I'm watching a trailer now. Is it all from the 2D perspective from yep. the side? Literally, the only thing that changes <laughs> is. Something will happen in the background. There's the school. Have a two-minute conversation about the school. Here's some cornfields. Now there's no cornfields. Now there's cornfields. Now there's no cornfields. That's really frustrating because I think... I, I, I don't... It doesn't feel like there's anything gained from a story perspective by having you have to hold down the right trigger for 45 minutes. There is one thing gained from it. You can hit the right bumper to beep the horn. Oh, there you go. Mm Mm-hmm. Honk. Yeah. <laughs> and then there is like, uh, there's an epilogue thing, which is basically a day in the life of the character you were and some of the regrets that they they have about not calling home. So I'm assuming mm-hmm. the family's dead based off the epilogue. Sure. But the epilogue is included in the console version. I think it was DLC for the original version. Don't play this game. I know Mina's in chat. I know you're here. <clears throat> we have. I'm so bummed out fans. because like, 
I like the style of this game and I like the idea of the story where it's like you could tell a really cool story of I'm driving home at night, there's a terrible storm and I'm I'm talking to someone on the phone because I need to stay awake mm-hmm. and I need to talk to someone while I'm driving through the middle of the Midwest, which is boring I've done plenty of times before. Like in the middle of the night. And I think there's a cool story to be told there, but I guess like conceptually there is something about it. It does yeah. on, on on a conceptual level, it really has the potential to be amazing. But by the time the game was finished, I didn't care about the characters, I didn't care about the parents. Kinda cared a little bit about the little brother. But the controls just made me want to throw my controller and it's a series two like elite, so I ain't throwing that controller around. Right. Like what a bummer. Yeah. This this isn't the first visual novel you've played, right? No. Um, Doki Doki was the first visual novel I played. <laughs> Boy, hit it. Okay. Hard and <laughs> fast, huh? <laughs> yeah, you, you started with, you know, the, the meanest and one of the best, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah. I, I, like I said, the uh, publisher we talked about a couple of weeks ago, I think Rathakali Games, have announced that they are releasing 10 visual novels to the Xbox store soon. So That's great. I'm going to check and see what they are and then potentially scramble down that rabbit hole so we, this can just become that visual novel podcast. Yeah, as it's always been. Mm-hmm. Since day one. Yeah. All about the visual novels. Um, I will get to Danganronpa eventually at some point, maybe when I'm 19. We'll see. Danganronpa, all three of those games are really good. I, the second one is probably the best. I have heard as much from, oh, I don't know, you... Mina, yeah. everybody else who ever talks about visual novels ever, period. Yeah. Have you played any of the Phoenix Wright games? Yes. That ain't, okay. That's not a visual novel. Come on, dude. That's a... That's a... It, it's very close. Um, and if you liked the Phoenix Wright games, you'll like Danganronpa. Mm-hmm. They, they share similar DNA where it's like, here's a bunch of vi- uh, visual novel stuff. Here's an investigation. Mm-hmm. Here's some... And it sort of flips between the two. Yeah. I played the first Phoenix Wright. I'm... Yeah, real waiting for that email notification from psprices.com not sponsored um, to tell me that that thing's gone down in price um, like the triple pack yes, or whatever it is I'm waiting yeah. on that because speaking of easy achievements that will be easy enough yeah and those first three Phoenix Wright games are all real good yep always games I wanted to play so I like um, yeah. Thingo as well though um, Professor Layton so yeah, I like yeah. strange games sometimes. Sometimes. Um, speaking of strange games, <clears throat> my final game this week, there's only one answer to this, and it's not Formula One 2019, because the new one will be coming out soon. Um, <laughs> it's Yakuza 0. Yeah, hell yeah, it is. I have now officially progressed further past the point that I had on the PlayStation 4. <clears throat> Perfect. Uh, there is a motorbike fight in a sewer pipe. Hell yeah, there was. Mm-hmm. Sick. That was, lots of shirts getting torn off. Yeah, lots of shirts getting torn off. Lots of water getting kicked in people's faces. Yeah. Um, I have a note here, which... I don't know if this is a swear word on the show, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, I have <clears throat> that damn calming towel. What was so, that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Inch has his shirts, shirts torn off? Perks up? Yep. That's right. Uh, so... The calming towel in Yakuza 0. This is an item that you get given as part of the sub-stories. I thought my game was glitched. Because (laughs) the calming towel keeps you calm at all times. Okay. So your rage meter doesn't go up? There we go. (laughs) Uh Aha. That may be why I didn't know what it was, because I was like, "Eh, probably never used it. Yep. So, I spent three fights... And that motorbike boss fight. Oh no. Not having any heat meter at all. Oh no. Assuming that my game was glitched and not wanting to put another 42 hours into the game because I'm insane right, right now and that's how much I've played Yakuza 0 over the past two weeks. I was annoyed. So I googled, why does um, Kiryu not have any heat meter? Is this a glitch? And the very right. first post was on Reddit, and the very first response was, do you have the calming towel equipped? <laughs> I went into my I, equipment, and I had the calming towel equipped. The thing that I think is so funny about this, your experience of playing this game, is that you're equipping items, a thing I really never did. <laughs> I had, like, three that I really liked. I found them early, I put them on, and then every time I get one, I just pop in, check it out, and usually it's not as good as the ones I had. 
Yeah. And that's fine. Whatever. I went in and it had like fives across the board. And I was like, well, that's oh, better than hello. this other little stupid charm I got for helping that woman out of the cult. So I'm just going right. to replace this calm with the with this charm with the calming towel. It's very hard to right. say all these c words. Charm with calm. Yep. Yep. I was like, great. Now I'm at, now I'm at like like six across the board, seven in a couple here yeah. and there. I was like, great. Super. Precious. I am going to go and I'm going to kick the crap out of that stupid shakedown guy. Yeah. Which I did like get him. four times already. So give me yeah. my money, punk. That's right. Show me the money. Um. And my heat wasn't working at all. And I was so confused, so frustrated. I didn't know what was going on. And then I checked it out. And yeah, that was literally, as soon as I Googled that, the first post was about it. The second, the first response was the calming towel. I was like, I hate you, calming towel. Uh, because yeah. the description tells you everything you need to know. It does not say, this will not let you gain heat. Right. It's like the one item, like a lot of items will say like, this makes enemies scared of you and they'll run away or like this one brings more enemies towards you or weakens them or whatever and this one's just like yeah it's a t- it's a really cool towel mm-hmm. keeps you calm you know yeah nice and simple it makes perfect sense if you know the consequences of equipping it right if you don't makes no sense at all it's like yeah. i don't know what i did differently but sure whatever that's fine uh i am up to like chapter 10 no so I know I'm coming real close to the end because I'm pretty sure this is a 14 chapter game. That I, sounds about right. 14 I or 16, so. maybe. Yeah, let me Google. So I think I maybe have one, the two left of each character. Is the 17 chapters? But I think the okay. 17th chapter is open like world stuff. The, the game is over. Yeah, back to yeah. The open world. Go and manage the cabaret club. Oh, God, it's so cool. Welcome, sir. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to take oh, your hostess out on dates. Yep. I already, that platinum hostess. O- already, yeah. already been. I already did the um, training, the cabaret club training with the girl who you start with at that club. I already did that all the way up yeah. to the point of karaoke. Uh, we went on our first karaoke date. Congratulations. Mm, not really. I got by in the skin of my teeth because it was the <laughs> injections one, the lively injections. And mm. the sinking is still off. So I have to yes. preempt all of the karaoke parts. It's right. really difficult. Uh, there are 17 chapters. That last chapter is like the finale, like the big fight one. Okay, so apparently there are missable achievements in this game. I didn't know that. That's great. I will probably have oh. to play through it at some point soon. Oh, it's the ones for the decisions and the side stories. Yes. Or like the decision in the chapters where it's like, don't chapter, mess up chapter the three. handshake. Yep, don't mess up the handshake. Chapter three yeah. with Kiryu, you have to get the best deal you can for the grand by doing all of the research right. beforehand. I forgot about that. Yeah, there's all of that stuff. I didn't get any of this. <laughs> com- nope. And also complete the game on legendary difficulty, which I don't even nope. know what nope. that is. <laughs> It is it brutally difficult. Okay, so I might not end up with the full 1K in this, but that's fine. It's because yeah. zero. I'll play it as much as I feel like playing it. I did. I'm just happy you've played it. Yes, um, I did a whole bunch of a whole bunch of the mini games and stuff. Whatever, you know, it that's fine. Kart racing. I haven't done pocket car racing yet. Okay, literally done pretty much every other one. Um, okay, saving the best for last, really. Pretty much, yeah. I love the pocket car racing stuff. Uh, beat beat down shakedown a couple of times. Looking pretty strong. Fled through the sewers. Um, I think Chow Yun Fat just showed up. He did. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. I saw his face and I was like, it was very quick cut. It was like <laughs> cut away, and I was like, was that Chow Yun Fat in a white suit with a silenced <laughs> pistol? Right. It's like who's that? Well, I know that guy. I, like I've seen some of the other people, like um the. Um, the guys, the head of the, the the three lieutenants and the, oh, what's it called? For the Tojo clan? Yes. I've seen yeah. those actors in Asian movies, so I know. That, yeah, like oh, they're they're all famous actors, so you're sort of like, I, I've seen that dude before. Like, what did I see that dude in? Yeah, like I've seen all of them, but then when I got like the quick snapshot of Chow Yun-Fat, I was like, is that really Chow Yun-Fat? Did Chow Yun Chow- Fat really just show up in this game? Because that's right. great if he did. If he didn't, whatever. Yeah. But he's wearing a white suit and he just killed the dude who was trying to kill me. So I'm fine with him being here. Yeah. It's just like, 
okay, sure, why not? Let's go down this down down this road. And it's like I know the guy who voice acts Kiryu has like a, a, I think he has a metal band or something as well. And it's like I'm, I'm half tempted to go down and see exactly what his <laughs> real life career is like. Yeah, but no, it, I mean it's Yakuza Zero. It's insane in all of the right and the wrong ways. Like yeah, it's you know. I don't even know. It's, there's a reason everybody talks about these games. And the reason is because they are great and also stupid and insane. <laughs> yeah, like they, they are they are at the same time really great in like this very serious Tojo clan soap opera. Mm-hmm. And then you're helping a lady get out of a cult. <laughs> like it's, yeah. There's such these wild swings, but it it makes so much sense because they, they complement each other really well. Yeah, and then you're dealing with an old lady who likes to push to the front of the line. It's like Okay. Well, like, yeah. I don't know why this person who is clearly a cold-blooded killer is letting this woman with a cat face sweater in front of him in line. <laughs> but okay. Yep. Smile and nod. Whatever. It's so good. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've been playing. Mr. Nimp, over to you. Okay. So, like I said in the pre-show... It wasn't until Friday that I realized that I hadn't played a video game all week. Cause, you know, <laughs> Sorry, F1. it's my fault. Um, <laughs> so, the first thing that I played was the Final Fantasy VII demo that came out on the PS4. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yes. I also uh, played that. Yeah. That looks really pretty. <laughs> that looks stupid good. Like, I, I think the I was surprised that HDR... Uh, is in that game yep. which oh, no. when it when i saw my camera when i saw the tv flicker and the little hdr logo came up and i was like oh really interesting <laughs> been like hello <laughs> this 4k hdr rock solid frame rate final fantasy 7 is just god it looks so good like yeah, i had god <laughs> i also had my gold headphones on for the ps4 yeah and the game just sounds amazing the music's yeah. great Mm. The new music is really good. Yeah, I can't. New, new old music. <laughs> I can't wait for this to come out. So, oh, yeah. don't wait. I, look, I, I, already, I already pre-ordered my games for the first two quarters of the year. I don't need another one added to that list. Thank you very right. much. Just wait. Wait well, until I, summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, prices. Part of, um, com, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Part of what, I, what I'm so interested in in the the remake is the dem so the demo is just the bombing mission yeah now it's not just the bombing mission because it, t- it took me like an hour and 15 minutes um and they there's so much more in there because they have you do so much more fighting and there's there's so much more exploration jesse and and wedge and and everybody is is really they talk a now. lot more yeah they talk a lot more still not sold on barrett's voice i i, I feel like i'm gonna be sold on barrett's voice as soon as they go back to the bar and meet tifa and marlene for the first yeah, time I, he has to be I think once he stops being yeah i think once he stops being such a hard ass it, yeah it'll make it a little bit better to take <laughs> um i like the bat so the there's like three um i think there's three options you get when you first start the game of like do you want the classic mode where it's kind of essentially turn-based that you can kind of run around in i picked the new one because i want to see how the the action uh worked uh that was great he has two different stances one's like a light attacks that's fast the other one's heavy attacks that are slow um you hit the x button and a final fantasy menu pops up and you have items and spells and skills and one of the skills is just braver like it's it's just like it's all the final fantasy 7 stuff um i kind of i'm torn on the the um scorpion tank fight it was very long um i think i get what they were going for but like the back and forth and the sheer amount of hp that boss had made that fight really really in final in the final fantasy 7 it's like a five minute fight where like don't attack the tail slash 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 slash. limit break um in this one like you're dodging behind cover and you're rolling and you're attacking its shield generator and you're like you're doing dodging missiles and all this stuff like there's so much going on there um well, and that I was think it's 
the other okay. thing that I found weird with this game is that the dodging doesn't work for Jack in this game. Um, the missiles, no. <laughs> even even if you dodge the first missile that's coming at you, anything that hits around you, you take damage from. The yeah. uh, EMP burst that it does, you have like a second or two to realize that that's what it's doing, and Cloud yeah. or Barrett can't dodge far enough out of the way to get out of it. Right. So it's like you really had to pay attention to your attacks, what it was doing, which is fine, I guess, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that, I, I, that fight itself, when you're just doing 12 points of damage, maybe on a good hit. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's sort of like, <laughs> this is long. I did like, so at the end of the demo, before they give you like a sizzle reel of Final Fantasy VII stuff coming in the game, yeah. uh, they give you like the first real story change in this game. You oh, see wow. um, the president of Shinra and Heidegger yep. talking through like a little cutscene interstitials. Um when the detonator goes to zero on the bomb you placed on the Mako reactor, it doesn't explode. Well, it does. It's just not that big. Yeah, it like doesn't do anything to yeah. the reactor. President Shinra tells Heidegger to turn the robots and all the machines and blow up the Mako reactor to kind of pin the blame on Avalanche, which I yeah. think is an, a pretty cool change that I wasn't expecting so i'm curious to see how they're gonna change because they don't shy away from them being eco terrorists i mean they're they're still there's still avalanche in this game yeah um but i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of interested to see where they keep diverging a little bit uh from this story because that that was that was a pretty cool scene yeah that actually kind of caught me off guard too especially when it got its own cutscene for everything that was going on for that moment yeah, or it takes you a second where it's like, okay, what are they doing now? And then they do that, and it's like, oh, this is taking a turn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I wish it was, I, the it was a game, cool demo, but yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> all of the visuals I see from it just make me think, well, it looks like they might actually do it some form of justice. And then I see gameplay, and it's like, oh, oh no. Yeah, oh. it's it's. I I like how all the characters look. Like even Barrett who has a machine gun for a hand like it's just like a stupid design in 2020 like mm -hmm. it, they do a really good job of selling all of these characters that had like 16 polygons on the, mm -hmm. the ps1 like yeah. cloud looks really good Aerith looks really good wedge looks kind of cool like they redesigned his outfit to be kind of cool um it, it just it all looks pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you say they were like four polygons, but they also had the manuals and some of that artwork in those manuals were incredible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, I, I I always discount that 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 art from Seven and a lot of the character art was really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I and I love the watch color. Um I love the way Tifa looks. Like I'm so glad <laughs> Tifa's redesign is so it's good. Really, really good. And I've yep. seen a, an image of red, like, and yeah. how they managed He's to make so red look as good as he does is his voice actor is really good too. There's there's been a short snippet of him saying like, "Of course I can talk. What do you think I am?" And it's like, yeah, that's real good. Okay, Cloud's voice actor is good too. Like they. He in most Final Fantasy VII things, he's like this deadpan brooding guy. Mm -hmm. In the demo, he's really sarcastic okay. in like a too cool for school way, and I, I think that's the difference that a lot of voice actors miss with Cloud. And it's, I think it's really pretty. Yeah, because yeah, there, I think there's it, a couple, it's really good. There's a couple jabs he throws at Barrett. And then he just yep. shut. Then he just shuts his eyes and he waits. There's there's one the really elevator. good. There's one really good line from Barrett where Barrett's like, "How old are you?" Um, and Cloud's oh, like, "Well, yeah. I'm, f I'm first class." And he goes, "Not your not your class, your age, you swear word." Because Barrett swears a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And Barrett goes, "Oh, okay. So I guess that your class is also your age. So I guess you're just a one year old. Good to know. Thanks for letting me know." It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, okay. Like, there's, there's so much more to this he, other than he always hit that read button, sarcastic do this thing. as well. Like his lines always yeah. read is sarcastic. I think if you yeah. want the deadpan one, you go to eight. Like, yes. we all love the deadpan. Yeah, whatever. Serious person <laughs> is the number eight protagonist, yeah. and I love him. I, I'm, I was excited for for the remake, and I think now after playing it, looks like it works really well. The battle system is really fun. I think it'll get 
much cooler once you can start slotting materia and stuff. And I'm I'm just I'm pumped. Yeah. Yeah, the, the only thing I've ever really been worried about is just what they're doing with the story because they don't really – Yeah. even now they're still releasing – like they recently just announced that you won't be playing with Red 13. He's just going to be a guest character. Yeah, he's not playable on the, yeah. the first part. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, okay, so how far into the story are you guys going and are you right. making up – it's like are you making up extra story in Midgar so that yeah. we haven't oh, gotten to that point percent. yet or – yeah. Sure, right, right, right. And yeah, is right. that content any good? Yeah. Because right. we all know that JRPGs are famous for just throwing crap in there and not all right. of it's great. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, uh, but, how many? So, do we think what? Second Golden Saucer visit and then end of? Or first? No, I think they. I think the ending cutscene of that game is the mo- them on the bridge leaving Midgar mm-hmm. and. um that's the final scene is them being like look at this giant world out there credits yeah and like after the highway battle yeah the most white chase and it's already come across i had several people in the games industry talking with people who are expecting this to be the full game still still i i would love for it to come out and be like surprise we got you it's four discs and the full thing i I genuinely don't think so. How Because I think they would have sold it. hour game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think they would have sold it like that. I think they would have said, like, the original reveal would have been like, this is just part one. And E3 mm-hmm. last year would have been like, gotcha, suckers. It's the whole thing. I, you know, they, they would have pushed that. If it does not say part one on the box by the time it comes out, how long to lawsuit in, in Europe? A couple months at most. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> whatever yeah moving on the next game that i played after that was uh neo mm. i finished a side mission in that one and i'm halfway through the second mission the uh cool thing about this is that it has a mission structure where it feels like the missions are about a half hour 45 minutes long Excuse and me. then it <clears throat> kicks you back out to the world map so I have it. You can save at these uh, shrines that are in the game. I think you've got one at the start and then one just before the major boss. I'm, um, I'm going to be right back. That sounds like there's something going on. Yeah, uh, continue, please. <laughs> um, so I hit the shrine. There's a major boss coming. I, it feels like anyway. And I gave it a break because I was just really tired and did not feel like I could get any further in that game the way I was feeling. Wait, so you don't want to play a Dark Souls game while you're tired? I did, but I don't want to play a boss in a Dark Souls game while I'm tired. I was already having... Because the the second mission that you do, you're on a cliff face, so you're walking Mm -hmm. like these narrow paths, and I can't tell you how many... Because I lost count of how many times I fell off the side of that stupid thing fighting things. Yep, I do that all the so, time in Dark Souls games. Like, the stupid yeah. skeletons in Dark Souls 1 in the dark areas. Like, every time. Yep. Every and time. This and game, this game, you can guarantee that if you see an item that's just sitting there waiting for you to pick it up, it's an ambush. Yeah, like, I've gotten... The and the ca- yeah, the cameras are so close that it's hard for you to look around corners. So I kind of have to jimmy it so that I can get the camera to come over far enough so I could figure out which corner the ambush is waiting on so I can, you know, block in that direction. And yeah, it's still a fun game. I really enjoy it so far. I'm sure I'm going to hit something that's going to make me furious and then I won't touch the game again. Probably. <laughs> I mean, I know a um, friend of the show, Mackie, really loves it. And he is a Dark Souls fan as well, at least the first Dark Souls. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he is a huge fan of he spoke way highly about about that. And it's one of those yeah. games that's like, I wish it was on the Xbox because then I'd probably buy it and play it. Well that's the thing, is like I'm not I'm not the biggest Dark Souls fan to begin. I don't have an issue with the series. It's just anything that challenging, I don't care. Mm-hmm. But this one for some reason right now is the same thing with uh Code Vein. Don't know why, but for some reason those just seem to be grabbing me right now. I don't mm-hmm. want to play a Dark Souls game. I mean, sometimes you just need a good character action game, and while Dark Souls have a very measured pace, we will say, they're very measured, whereas then you get stuff like Code Vein, Neo, um, the one that came out last year that I can never remember the name of, um, everyone complained about its difficulty, 
fast-paced ninjas. Similar. Sekiro? That's the one. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> like that is by all by all rights that looks like just a solid character action game that just happens to be particular punish particularly punishing when it comes to yep. death and stuff like that. Sekiro looks like an awesome game just because of the verticality that you can get in that game. That looks yeah. like a Tenchu game. That is a hundred percent on my PS prices list already. Yeah. I don't know if I would ever play it. I might get it dirt cheap for twenty bucks one day, but I well, don't know I'll, if I'd ever play it. I'll keep an eye on my if I ever get the email alert from PS prices and it's like twenty bucks, I'll let you know. Sweet. So the other games that I played after that Two of them kind of go hand in hand. I played Forza Horizon 3. Okay, so you played the cross-generational Forza Horizon. Okay. Yes. How was that? Um, I still really enjoy that. I got that for free when I bought my Xbox One forever ago. It was part of the bundle. Yeah. Um, And it gave me all the DLC as well. So I started the the Mountain DLC. Mm -hmm. Blizzard Mountain or whatever they called it. Yeah. Yeah. That's still pretty fun. I that's my favorite DLC in all Forza games that I've played. And for the record, I haven't played the Lego version, uh, so I don't know if that's any good. But Blizzard Mountain is insanely fun because it's just like here is a here is a literal blizzard. You can't see more than two feet in front of you. Go. Well, and that was the th- one of the races. They'll tell you flat out before you even start a race that hey, this has blizzard conditions. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. And they are not joking. Where you're barely seeing past the hood of your car you see a light that's supposed to indicate that hey this is the end of the track or you know the side of the track and you blow through that before you even register it's a light so that's that's kind of a pain sometimes (laughs) especially when they start having you do the truck races because you start out um it's just car rally basically Mm -hmm. and then eventually as you get further into it they start introducing the trucks and stuff and i have the warthog because i got that from the what was that? Some community thing that you could do? Yeah, or whatever? it was a community event like five years ago, and yeah, everyone completed it. So everyone who ever plays the game now gets a warthog for free. Yeah, so I have the warthog. We're talking about Horizon Three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'm back. I had uh, an incident involving. We have a three-year-old. Uh, there's no impulse control. So uh-huh. <laughs> apologies. Um. So I decided to use the warthog in one of the races. And that thing does not have traction control for nope. anything. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's very accurate. Yeah. Which yeah. is fine because this one particular race, all the other drive guitars were also driving warthogs. So it was all eight of us just sliding across the track trying <laughs> to go straight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> If I'm um, right as well, in I think in three you couldn't even put the snow tires on the warthog either. I think they didn't let you do that. I think it's just stock. Yeah, Yeah, I think you couldn't do that until 4. I think in Horizon 4, you can put snow tires on it. Yeah, Yeah, I don't remember if this one said or not. It didn't have the snow icon on it, like some Mm, of my other trucks did. So, whatever. It made for a really interesting race, with all of us just (laughs) bouncing off of each other, trying to get traction to go forward. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so I I did a lot of that. Um, I am on race... Was it King of the Hill, King of the Mountain Race Three? And I think there's five or six of them all together, maybe mm. more. I'm like twenty one. I'm twenty one percent on the DLC right now. Yeah, the, King so, of the Mountain. There's like fifteen, twenty races total. I think. Yeah, so I'm just bouncing around doing random crap on that one. Um, after that, I started playing Forza Motorsport Six because that was free one time. Mm. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and. I just figured, screw it. I kind of feel like playing a, a little bit of a racing game because I don't have. Was this inspired by anything in particular? No, or I it, it, it was. No, it really wasn't. It's it's the simple. I'm fact. playing F1 2019. No, <laughs> unrelated. I'm, I'm, I'm in that weird phase where I don't feel like playing anything, and usually yep. when that happens in the past, there would be a Ratchet and Clank game that would come out, so I would get it and play the hell out of it. Well, we haven't had a Ratchet and Clank game in forever, mm-hmm. Insomniac. So yeah, I'm for just, real. Yeah, so I'm just kind of bouncing around to a bunch of other things. So I had Motorsport Six on here. Pop, you know, turned that on. And funny story is that the I chose to go with Volkswagen as my first um model. Mm-hmm. So I could get, you know, the credits and all that crap for it. And the second race was a hash 
what was it a hatchback what do they call it hatchback something i don't remember it was some, hot hatchbacks or yeah, something like, like that yeah hot something hatches. like that <laughs> yeah and they would let you buy a 1988 volkswagen scirocco oh, okay now none of you know that my second car was a 1985 wolfensburg scirocco there you go and that bad boy was fast all yeah. the way until the front axle on it snapped in half. <laughs> <laughs> so it was too fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, that's funny. So I bought it, and it handles actually really close to how I remember driving the thing. And it was a funny joke between me and my wife because one day when my wife and I were driving back and forth between classes for college, um, the passenger seat broke. So she was forever sitting in the back bench. Like, I was driving her around. <laughs> so I loaded up the game, and it's got the Scirocco on my big screen just in, the, like, this display mode. And she's like, that's hilarious. And then I took it for a drive. And, like, you can – of course, you get the first-person view mode and all that. And I'm sitting there looking on the inside. And I knew it was going to be accurate, but it's still surprising to see that a car that I owned is in – a racing game <laughs> yep, and it's a hundred percent accurate. So. Right. Yep. And that's, then come to find out, go ahead. I was just gonna say that's the, that's always the joy I've had seen like 1998 Ford Escorts, like back in the Gran Turismo days. And it's yeah. Just like, yeah. Dude, like really solid. That's a car. real car. I yeah. was like, <laughs> yeah. literally it's a family van. Like, cool. Yeah. Well, and then I found out that as I continued racing, I got to upgrade to, cause that was a, what was it? A D grade. Um, mm-hmm. For those races. So then I had to upgrade to a B grade for the following three races or whatever that I had to do. And that's when I found out that apparently Volkswagen continued to make Scirocco's again in 2010, going all the way up to 2014, I think it was. Oh, wow. So I have a 2011 Volkswagen Scirocco now that I'm driving in this game. Yeah. <laughs> so... And so is this just going to be the Scirocco family? Yeah, uh, every class yeah, for, have that one same vehicle for every single class. If if they keep giving it to me, I will keep buying it. Here is my I really love that car, car Chiraco, and here is my X class Chiraco. Well, and no joke, like that car, I should not have been able to fit into that car mm-hmm. um, because <laughs> when I stood next to it, I think the the roof of that car probably came just below my chest. Yep. <laughs> so. But that seat, I can move that seat so far back. And it was a manual. So I could move Mm. that seat so far back and have plenty of leg room. My head would still bang up on the ceiling. But, (laughs) God, I loved that car. I actually... I actually started looking on Craigslist to see if there are any Scirocco's for sale around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that by any chance because you're fed up of uh, rough idling and delayed shifting? <clears throat> sorry. I actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I actually told my wife, because um, I looked up to see if there were um, any newer model Scirocco's around here, and there's a, currently one A2014 that's around here that's for sale. Mm. And I told my wife, if this truck bites it, stuff's going down and I'm getting the Scirocco. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know my next car. Yeah. Um, so after that, um, I played Kingdom Come Deliverance, um, streamed a little bit of, or I, yeah, I streamed a little bit of it Friday. I got out of the castle. I had to jump. They keep saying that you went into a moat. You don't really, you jump off like this really tiny bridge that's just over some rocks and then you have to make a run for it because they sound an alarm saying that the prisoner gets away. You're not a prisoner, really. It's just the Lord is keeping you there because you're stupid and you're injured and the Lord is right, and your character's got so much dumb tunnel vision about wanting to bury his parents in the town that, that he used to live in. Mm-hmm. They had been overrun by an entire army, but in his one-track little mind, he's going to be the one that's going back there to bury his parents. So not a prisoner, just a warden of the state. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so once you get out of the castle... There are guards that are just patrolling the village like they normally do, and so they sound an alarm, letting you, letting them know, "Hey, this guy's out. Bring him back because he's an idiot." Mm-hmm. And I ran into one. I got to give him a sob story. I, I uh, managed to pass a persuasion check, basically, where the guy would be like, "All right, I'm just gonna say that I twisted my ankle. You keep running." So, mm-hmm. All right, cool. So I do that. Run past him. Look behind me. All of a sudden, there's a different guard chasing me. I'm like, oh, crap. 
hightail it out of there. I was supposed to be, there was an optional thing for this quest where you could find a horse. Couldn't find where any of the horses were. So I spent half an hour <laughs> running around this village looking for my horse. I'm whistling. Guards are chasing me. And finally I just say, screw it. Well, I got to run all the way whistling? across this map. No. <laughs> if you don't want the guards to chase you, stop whistling. Dude, that's the problem is that for me, I know that this guy is an idiot. So I don't care if I get caught. Really, they <laughs> should he's just dumb. lock them up. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Eventually, without my horse, I get back across the map. It does this little cutscene fast travel thing, so I really didn't have to run all the way across this map because it would have taken forever. Mm-hmm. And you get to the village, and a bunch of stuff happens, but basically you get the crap beat out of you because you're an idiot, <laughs> and you still don't get to bury your parents. Somebody else had to bury them for you because oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> um. So then they do this whole cutscene into the future and they do, you know, title drop and all this stuff and they show you sights and sounds and all that stuff. And this game has some really good music and really good sound effects in it. Mm. Um, The birds just listening to the wind go through the grass, water, all sounds really awesome. The music, when I left it on the pause or for the uh, title screen for a while, the music that plays, really awesome. Mm. Um, but they bring you into this little, um, house and you wake up and basically this woman who was part of your village brought you to her uncle's because you got the crap beat out of you because you're an idiot. Right. And it says like two weeks later or whatever, you're healed, kind of, you're ready to go. Her uncle is mad that you're here because he didn't want you there. And now you have to pay off like basically your medical bills. So <laughs> in order to pay him off, you have he gives you a job to steal a ring from an executioner. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Manage to do that after some trial and error. Go back to my bed so that he can go to sleep and so that he can save. And then the game crashes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Fantastic. So I only lost, I think, like a half hour, 45 minutes on that one. But now that I know mm. what to do, it's going to go a lot faster. Mm. Um, But yeah, the... I can't get over how dumb your character is. Like I, I kind of hate playing as this character. Yeah. <laughs> anytime, anytime he opens his mouth, I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> You're naturally playing a low intelligence build. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's all fun and good. Um, I'm going to pick it up again here and probably later on this week, just because I, I want to redo. Cause the funny thing was with trying to get this ring from this executioner was that you're supposed to lock pick. And I'm playing with the Xbox One controller plugged into my PC. Mm-hmm. And you have to hold down, hold down. I think it's the uh, left bumper, so that you can turn the lock around counterclockwise. And you have to have, like, this ball in a certain location on that. And you have to follow it. Like, that ball has to move with the lock at a certain point, so that way it unlocks. Mm. Right. It doesn't work well with controllers. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> you're, spo- you're supposed to be able to feather the lock a little bit so you know it slowly moves. No, this is on-off. So either it's moving or it's not. <laughs> so I broke that lock, and I was trying to find a place where I could buy lock picks. I can't get into any of the towns. I don't have any money. And eventually I was like, all right, screw it. I guess I'm going to have to kill this guy to get his key to open this trunk so I can get this ring. And the guy happened to lay down for a nap or something, so I snuck into his room, held my hand over his face, and just knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the stabby, stabby McStabby when you said held your hand over his face. Well, yeah. no, because at, at this point, you don't have any of your weapons or anything, which I found out I could have had them again if I had looked in one trunk. But it seemed like at this point, they had taken all your stuff away from you. Mm-hmm. So I'm running around buck naked through the wild trying to steal this ring from this execution. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, it gave me the option of killing him or just making him, you know, just knocking him out. It's like, all right, let's just knock him out. And the guy struggles a little bit. And I found myself just going, shh, 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 yeah, sleep, <laughs> sleep, yeah. sleep, sleep. So, sleep. yeah. So I can't wait to see what other dumb stuff this game is going to let me do or not do. Because it's fine when I do it. It's not fine when the idiot character wants to do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the last game that I played this week was No Man's Sky with my son. Yep. Did you get your um, egg chip? 
No, screw that egg ship. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth it. Yeah. Eventually, eventually, I will get to it. So the the problem we ran into now is I was trying to get. I figured with my son and I, we'll go into the community area. We'll both start this mission that way. We both can rack up, you know, everything going towards this. We can get uh, what was it? Quicksilver is what we're trying to get right now. Mm-hmm. We can't get into the same community instance, even though we are in the same game with each other. Weird. And apparently, this is a known issue. <laughs> and I had also read that even if you do manage to get into the same community center, there's a possibility that when you leave, you will not be leaving or you will not enter the same instance. So you'll oh, both be boy. in your own instance of the game. So. <laughs> After about 15, 20 minutes of us trying to figure out how to get into the same community area, we gave up. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I think that that's the best course of action is, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> yeah. So we both kind of did our own thing. Um, I managed to, one of the missions I was supposed to do was go find a black hole and just fly into it. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I can't wait to see how this goes. Oh, they and look so cool. They do. But they're they're using it as black holes are apparently warp points now, so it like shot yep. me clear across the galaxy to a different place now. Yeah, which is it fine. sends you very far away. <laughs> yeah, which is fine because every system that you go into has a space station, and every space yeah space station has a portal. So if you use that portal once, you can always go back to it. So I uh right yeah so I went to the space station, jumped to the portal, went back to my base my main base. And then portaled back over to where I was at so that I could fly through the black hole and then did the same thing at the other one. And now the game, now my game mission is, oh, go explore. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> that's that's what I was doing in the one system that I've stayed in for the last 40 hours. So. Right, that was yeah. my plan. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm just kind of flying around. I don't really have... I guess, like, anything, a goal that I'm working towards right now, I've kind of just been doing whatever quest it's been throwing at me. Mm-hmm. But now that it's just like, ah, oh, go explore, I'm like, well, now I'll just go back to my home system and just build my base again until something happens. Right. <clears throat> so that's pretty much all I've been doing. My son and I ran around. I was running low on resources, so I started digging around with that stuff. My son decided to blow up a bunch of things. <laughs> and that brought my allegiance down with a couple other people who I don't know because I haven't met right. them yet. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah. I was, so, so I was like, you can't just shoot pirates. Why does it have to be anything that moves in this game? <laughs> right. Yeah. Pirates will attack you, shoot them, yeah. not anything else. So, yeah. So, right now we're just flying around, apparently just shooting whatever. It's the Wild West. Yeah. He's having fun. <laughs> So it works out for me, I guess. So that's all I've been playing this week. Uh, all right. The, uh, for me, Division 2, the uh, title update 8 and the Warlords of New York expansion is out. Loot 2.0. Yes, Loot 2.0 is out, which a um, couple of – I'll talk about that first and then I'll, I'll talk about Warlords next. Loot 2.0 is really cool. Um, the game does such a better job now of telling you – what gear is good and what gear is bad and very clearly telling you what the roles are on the gear that you have picked up. Um, all they've changed it. So before you could have like two or three mod slots on a piece of gear Mm -hmm. and maybe the gear wouldn't have a lot of stats on it, but it had a whole bunch of mod slots. That's largely changed as well. Every piece of gear will have three stats, kind of a primary stat and then two secondary stats. This is sort of separate from the 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 talent, the skill that's on the weapon. Mm-hmm. If it will have a mod slot, it will have one. Okay. Um, so you're sort of incur- – the whole thing is kind of encouraging you to – use the gear you have and then kind of modify it in a way that I'll talk about here in a second. Um, I think Loot 2.0 overall for me has largely been a success. I know the community is a little bit cool on it because a lot of purples are dropping right now as opposed to the yellow uh, items that you really want. Um, But overall it has largely been successful because of 
the changes they made to the recalibration station, which is still an incredibly fun phrase to say. <laughs> um, I still love that from the first division, just walking upstairs and seeing, like, oh, it's the recalibration station, of course. Yeah. So the there's two halves of it now. The How the recalibration station used to work is you'd have a gun that had a nearly perfect roll on it, but let's say you wanted to, to replace uh, headshot damage on it. You have another gun with a skill or a stat that you wanted to put on your first gun. You would basically destroy the first gun to put the that skill or talent or whatever on the gun you really wanted to keep. They've done away with that system. What you have now is the recalibration library. And this is the thing that I want every loot game to steal. Because what happens now is... For every type of gear and every type of weapon, you have three categories. It's like uh, core talents, skills, and sort of attributes. And what you're doing is you're finding and extracting skills and values from the gun, from any gun and any piece of gear to store in your library. So, for example, I like assault rifles a lot. Um, right. so one of the gun. main, what's that? Damn right. It's the best gun. Well, I assault rifles, good ones at all. Yeah. Assault rifles are maybe not in the best spot right now. That seems like they're doing a little bit less damage than intended. There have been some bugs with this expansion. Um, so one of the primary stats on, or the primary stat on assault rifles is assault rifle damage. And there's a bar that goes from 0% to 15%. And this is additional damage you're doing on top of just the regular DPS the gun has on top of it. Interesting. So what you're doing now, and that there's like that primary stat, and then there's two other stats, and then a talent usually. So it's, it's kind of the same. The gear functions the same way it, it has before. What the recalibration library does now is if you find a gun that has a god roll value for assault rifle damage, like let's say it's 15% and it's maxed out, you want to destroy that gun and pull that 15% value and put it in your library. So let's say you get another assault rifle you love, and every stat on it is perfect, but that assault rifle damage is 3%. Like, it's just garbage. You can replace that assault rifle value, that 3%, with the 15% from your library for materials and money, and you have recalibrated your gun, and that 15% value stays in your library Thank permanently. You. Sweet. Goodness. So what it's this does what they now... Did with the mods, like the way they did the mods, where it's like, you've unlocked this yeah. mod, now you have it for everything, craft it once Yeah, like your you attachments for your gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that um, actually confused me for a minute when I had... What was it? It was a... Oh, it was a grip that I had gotten for one weapon. Yeah. It really confused me when I threw it on one weapon. It's like, oh, hey, you still have this other grip that you can put on the other weapon. Like, right. I only made one. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, it's really interesting because now almost while you're building your library, which I've built maybe like 15% of the possible values in this library, <laughs> every piece of loot that drops – is potentially valuable, even if it's a purple, even if it's a blue. Even if it's because, a gray, if it's got the the best tier it can for that, then you can just slot it all off. Exactly. Yeah, you can extract that value, put oh, it in no. your library, hmm. and then apply it. And for anyone that's probably asking the question of like, well, how do you not just make every gun you have super powered? You can only recalibrate one thing on a gun. So if I recalibrate assault rifle damage, the gun locks. I can if I can recalibrate that value again, but I can't do that and a talent and an, and a mod mm -hmm. slot. I can't do multiple things. I can only do the one thing. So it, ta it takes a, this is so, it takes a, a really good piece of gear to a whole yep. other level when you take that yep. one big negative off it and then put something positive in its place. It's the th it's the thing you get in a lot of loot games like Destiny 2 where it's like, oh, I got this great drop for this gun, but the magazine slot is 
garbage and mm-hmm. everything else is perfect like i wish i could just three bullets yeah. yeah and it's just like i don't this isn't useful the great part about this is not only am I like scooping up 75 pieces of gear and then going to the recalibration station and like pulling out all these cool values, but it means that a really close to perfect roll can be a perfect roll for your build with just some materials and the recalibration station. Yep. So super, super cool. I, I think that. I think that is a huge change for this game that I think between loop 2.0 and the, the new recalibration station, I think both of those are, are super, super cool. Um, they have done away with gear score and world tiers. Now though, when you hit level 40, all gear is level 40 and it's kind of, that's the difficulty you can now, instead of world tiers, you can now change the difficulty of the open world. So okay. open world can be like normal, heroic, challenging, legendary, whenever that comes out. See, that's, and you can... that's how they did the world tiers in Division 1. Because it, oh, okay. it didn't have the whole thing where you had to go through the story to up the world tier. What happened right. was once you hit the, ma- the level cap, you could just go into the world map and be like, okay, now I want it world tier 1. Now two, now three, now five, now six, now seven. It's very gotcha. much similar to the Diablo Torment difficulties, where it's like oh, once okay. you're geared for the next difficulty, you move on to the next difficulty, then the next one, then the next right. one. Right, and that's smart. From what I understand as well, didn't they also basically introduce whatever it was from Diablo three as well here? The <laughs> so we'll, we'll get to that in oh. a second. But the other thing they've done to the open world. He, They've um, put uh, directives in the game. I think there's five or six of them. And basically it's like there are optional challenge modifiers you can put on where it's like fog of war. There's no uh, mini map and no incoming fire notification or there's no health regen or less ammo drops. Every one of those you put on, you get an extra 25% XP. So you can... I, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's also pulling from the Underground DLC from Division 1. The directives yes. is literally what they did yep. there. And what's really interesting, it's not working right now. Uh, there seems to be a bug with it, is control points don't get recaptured anymore. Good. So you can capture the entirety of the map. This isn't working, but how it's supposed to do is when you change difficulties on the world map all of those are supposed to go red again. So you can go and recapture all of them on a harder difficulty. Mm -hmm. And now you can, uh, before it was, oh, here's a control point. I'm going to attack supply routes to that control point and up the difficulty of the control point. You can still do that. Or every time you increase the difficulty, they start at, like if you put the game on challenging, every control point starts at level three. Mm-hmm. So there, you can kind of choose your own difficulty at this point. Um, it is really interesting that you did bring up Diablo three because the Paragon system in Diablo three, they just lifted that and That's put that as one. shade levels in uh, in the Division two. When you finish the storyline, no spoilers yet. Um, you get a, a a different watch on your wrist and that is what is your new shade levels. And it's very much like, here's a point in the red column and you can choose uh, like weapon damage or crit chance or crit damage. There's like Mm -hmm. four options for each of the four categories. And you put a point in there and it goes up by 0.02%. And there's a whole bunch of like, there's just hundreds of points you can put in each and every one. And like the very last one is um, put a point and get, materials or currency out so it's like you put a point in there you could get some of the crafting materials are like ten thousand e credits Mm -hmm. um so they just they lifted that system which is great they're literally throwing shade ha ha yeah (laughs) um so i think all of that stuff is really good the new season hasn't started yet um that's gonna be starting this upcoming week because they wanted everyone to get the thing with the DLC is when you start Warlords of New York, you are stuck in New York City until you finish it. The mm-hmm. game tells you that beforehand, so it's not a surprise. 
Um, so they're waiting for people to hit level 40, get geared up a little bit, finish the DLC, sort of do the whole thing before the season starts. Um, and the big thing that they're introducing over the season, they have a season pass and they have two tracks. And if you bought Warlords in New York, you have the premium, the standard thing that all these games do now. Yep. Um, the additional thing that they're doing is they're going to have a new manhunt in the big thing in the, the New York DLC is and take out these four lieutenants from Keener and then go take him out. And they're I mean, introducing that similar w- to a deck of 52, one might say. Sort of, yes. Um, there is a new uh, card deck in this game. They um, went with the various arcana for the new cards. Um, they're going to do that in DC with like every week there will be a new lieutenant and then the last week, or it's like every other week. Um, the last one will be the the big person, and then you'll get a new agent skill when you beat the the final person. Um, so, sounds pretty cool. Sounds like a cool season uh, that they're coming up. You also get two complete gear sets by uh, going through the season pass, which seems pretty cool. Uh, one of them is the striker set that's coming back from Division One, which apparently was like the set for PVE. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're also putting out a PvP set like anyone cares about that in the division. Um, you would be surprised at the trolls in the dark zone. There is a lot. Uh, no, I'm talking about like pure PvP, like uh, conflict, like the PvP yeah. mode, not just dark zone, like w- weird. Um, World is in New York. So they have one, t- like they did with DC, they one to one mapped the lower portion of Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Downtown rather uh, than is- uptown. Right. Um, it is a very dense map. It's really interesting because it's so different from uh, DC because DC has like these big wide open streets and all this stuff. Manhattan has these really narrow sidewalks and walkways and streets. So it's a much more confined location. As a result... They've bur- they've built a lot of verticality into the map. You're you can spend a ton of time going between roofs and climbing stuff. And there's some more underground. St- there's a lot more underground stuff, which makes more sense in New York City. Um, all of that stuff is really great. Not crazy about kind of half of the boss battles of Keener's lieutenants. Um, they they do this thing where it's like here are the four lieutenants. Go do whichever ones you want. It's freeform. So as a result, story isn't really that great. Story's not Division's strongest point to begin with, so not I, super surprising. Yeah, tell me that the dollar flu doesn't matter. <laughs> the dollar flu matters, the green poison. Um, and I thought by revisiting Aaron Keener, they were going to kind of ramp up some of the storytelling that I think from the stuff I've seen and read from Division 1, they did a little bit better than the base game of Division 2, which had a story I could not... I, with a gun to my head, I would have no idea what to tell you about. Um, you, you go to a location, you shoot something. That's right. They tell me what to I, shoot, and yeah. I... Yeah. I will not spoil the story for Division 2. I will not do yeah. it, because there are people... It's because you can't, because there isn't a no. story. I can tell you exactly what the big reveal is towards the end of the game, but we have some people in chat who may not have beat the game yet. Yeah, the, there's some cool stuff, especially in the, the DLC where they deal with um, the president, uh, to not spoil anything. I think I think they do some cool stuff with like the post-game, because I think they heard people saying, like, hey, I completed this game, and I kind of don't know what's going on. Um, mm. So I feel like some of the lieutenant stuff falls a little bit flat what i really really want the division to do and i don't know if they'll ever get there is to do a better job at questioning am i am i a good guy as part of the division or are the rogues do the rogues have something you know do, are aaron keener's followers do they have something there is their ethos interesting and mm-hmm. They so far haven't really done that other than we're the good guys, rah, rah, rah. Those are the bad guys. You know, their their cell's been activated. Um, so 
small non-story spoilers here. I want to talk about how hot garbage the final boss battle is. So if anyone wants to not hear mechanical spoilers, skip over a little bit. I will absolutely not um, spoil the story at the end of this because it's a huge, massive lore changing bomb that even I was like, oh, snaps. You did that? Okay. Um, you genuinely fight against Aaron Keener at the end, which is great. I, I thought they were going to do like a poof, smoke bomb. Oh, he's gone. Again. Oh, no. Where did he go? Yeah, like, oh, he got us again. He left. Um, you genuinely fight against Aaron Keener. The problem, I have a heavily, I've heavily invested in a skill build. I have my healing drone. I have my assault turret. Between that, we're kind of a three-man team doing some work. That goes out the window almost immediately with the Keener fight because he hacks your equipment. Yep. So my my drone floats on over to him, starts repairing his armor, which sucks. Um, my turret turns back on me and starts destroying me. And at that point, I had um, skill tier six. So my drone and my turret have about 300% extra health and do about 400% extra damage. Nice. I'm getting destroyed now and you I know. can't destroy those things. Now you know how they feel. Right. I don't feel that badly for like the Rikers, especially because they <laughs> suck. Um, so the problem is you can pull out like your, your pulse drone and, and sort of push back on some of the stuff he's doing but i can't i can't use the skills that i have built to pay the bills my entire character around i'm not super strong at shooting guns mm -hmm. because i'm super strong at skills and that made that fight really terrible <laughs> and of course I had the specialization that's just the stupid crossbow so i can't even like light him up with like uh, super powered uh, precision, like pinnacle we weapons. It was really bad. And I got him to the point where I defeated him and he was like doing this runaway thing to like lead into a cutscene. Um, a flame turret of his destroyed me as it was like clicking over into him escaping, like the final phase, mm -hmm. and killed me. Like I'd nice. finished the fight. And it had killed me when I, when I, it, he like EMP pulses you and he can't move. And I just have this thing like right in my face and it murdered me. I was like, I swear to God. Did it, did it you have me, to, did you have to beat the fight again or did it take a hundred percent? It took me two and a half <laughs> hours to beat this one fight over probably 15 to 20 attempts. Jeez. It was horrible. And I'm sure if you're playing this on PC, the tiny little firebombing drones that he's sending your way, probably not really a problem. Or like the the seeking drone missile bombs that he's sending you are not a problem. On consoles, it's a lot harder to hit these tiny little super armored yellow health bar drones. So okay. I really loved everything else in this game, except for that really bad fight. Um, so... Or end spoilers there. Um, I'm really enjoying The Division 2 again. The community feels very differently. <laughs> uh, the, the community sentiment is, oh God, we've gone back to 1.3 in Division 1. Oh, holy Christ, what have you done? I don't think it's that bad. I, 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 there, there's some hyperbole there, but I think there's a lot of problems with enemy health scaling that's happening right now, especially if you're in four person party oh, where the geez. game is like really scaling the difficulty up. A lot of people, the division two and title update six and seven had a problem where you could just turn yourself into an unstoppable death tank and just solo challenging, like the highest difficulty stuff by yourself, not even taking cover. Like you're really just, fun. yeah, it was really fun, but you're just ramboing through these dudes and just like, Yellow health bar enemy, whatever, and he's dead. Hey, you know, just hey. they drew blood fast. 
That that's right. I was having a lot of fun with the game, but I can understand from a longevity standpoint. Oh yeah, they removed the damage to elites uh, stat th- that's no longer in the game uh, because people were like stacking up to extra fifty five percent damage to elites and just chewing through them faster than purple health bar enemies. Like it was just no challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's an understandable community pushback on. Hey, this game used to be super fun for four people or or solo people or whatever. And now we feel like we're getting punished. I feel like there's a good middle ground there that maybe Massive is going to find over time. Um, but m- maybe the community can kind of take a breath here for a little bit. You're acting a lot like the Destiny 2 community right now. That's not a good look. So, nope. like, let's all... Let's all take a breath. It's only been out for like five days. Let's all chill out. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with with uh, Division Two. I'm happy. I'm I'm back at it again. Um, I just it's it's so much fun to shoot guns in that game mm. that I just have fun coming back to that game and being like, yeah, just this game feels good to play. The the moment to moment gunplay just feels really great. Uh, Sad news for Division 2, though. Destiny 2's new season starts on Tuesday, so... Well, well, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if Destiny 2's new season starts on Tuesday, where does that leave Fortnite? In the dust. <laughs> <laughs> there can only be two, and uh, they both have two in the name. <laughs> so, and they hey, both start with a D. <laughs> that's right. Too Fast, Too Furious. Division 2, Destiny 2. Um, yeah. I, I'm i really enjoying it. I I feel like uh gaming rich and chat says spent all last weekend playing division two best three dollars i've ever spent yeah man like if, if you're if you're coming into what the community is calling itself three dollar the three dollar wave of agents um you're getting a really great game that's in a pretty good spot right now mm-hmm. um and world losing new york is pretty good and it's only like 30 bucks so uh two thumbs up uh last game that i've been uh playing want to talk really quickly about murder by numbers uh, yes the most boston, boston game that ever boston god they just made it for me man um it very much is phoenix Wright plus picross uh and you're getting a whole bunch of characters talking to each other like visual novel style and then every once in a while so <laughs> your character honor she finds this um a uh, robot called scout and he is having problems with like his camera so how you do in your investigations is he looks around the room with this reticle when the reticle turns red you hit the a button and it says hey i found something and a nonogram picross puzzle comes up and the the solution to the picross puzzle the picture you make is the clue he's found okay so like you you do this whole thing and it's like it pops up and it's like you found a wallet and then honor scout goes oh this must be the killer's wallet whatever and it's like it's this really cool back and forth of here's the phoenix right interrogation and presenting evidence and trying to figure out a puzzle and then hey i think i found something and you do a, a nonogram picross thing oh, um jeez yeah. has a pretty good tutorial for picross stuff if you've never played it the the puzzles feel like they have a pretty good difficulty the writing is really good the music is outstanding the art the character design is great like it's a really great looking game and it somehow managed to smush together two sub genres that i really like <laughs> like the phoenix Wright sub genre of visual novels and then the picross sub genre of uh of uh, puzzle games and it is it's really good i'm probably about halfway through the first uh case right now it looks like there's four cases um and uh murder by numbers is really good game pass one uh xbox one when ps4 Mm -hmm. when it's on switch and pc right now yeah which of course it is because that's where games go to be sold yep um and apparently it's doing very well, so I'm I'm very proud of that team for for getting it out there. Um, yeah, murder by numbers. Not a lot to say uh, about it right now, other than 
it is the thing it said it was going to be, and it's doing that thing really well. Uh, so that's all I'm playing this week. Let's take a break. Let's talk releases for the week of March 9th, 2020. Ori and the Will of the Wisps comes oh, out on no. Xbox One and PC. Game Pass day and date on both. I cannot wait to play this. The first one is really good, and I want to see. I've paid attention to almost none of this game because an Ori sequel is enough to get me in anyway. Do you want um, very minor spoilers? Sure. It turns out they played Hollow Knight. Oh, no. <laughs> Great. Game of the year coming in next week. Um, I'm very curious to see where they, how they evolve the the Ori game um, and find a new way to just tear my heart out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll find out here pretty soon. Uh, Neo 2 comes out on the PS4. Uh, if you've been interested in this game, they've released about 14 demos, so you probably have a good idea of what this game is by yeah. this point. Um, uh, so, yeah, a Twitter account I recently learned about and started following uh, called Scrub Quotes. Um, mm. When the last demo came out with the ridiculously hard boss, was full of quotes from people complaining about that demo. So, great, great. It's a Neo sequel. Uh, and lastly, My Hero 1's Justice 2 comes out for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. This is an arena-based fighter uh, based on My Hero Academia. So, a bunch of stuff I know nothing about. Anime. But it's coming out. Uh, first news story here, Riot's Project A is finally unveiled as Valorant. If you remember, like a year ago, 18 months ago, Riot was like, here's a cool new story. We're working on 23 games. It's like, with the what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, like, the first one they really pitched was Project A, which they said was going to be a stylish, competitive, character based tactical shooter for PC. And we all went, oh, yeah, oh, Overwatch. Overwatch. Okay. Yeah, cool. What it turns out to be is a 5v5 Counter Strike with powers. Oh, so Siege. Like, no, like, actual Counter Strike. Like, if you watch the trailer, you go, cool, that's just, someone just made actual Counter-Strike, like, pull out the knife to run faster, buy guns between rounds, like, guns look and function exactly the same, and then th- someone throws up a wall of fire, and it's like, oh, so, ca- Counter-Strike with powers, somehow? Like, actual, potentially Count- litigious Counter-Strike? <laughs> Counter-Watch, or Overstrike. Perfect. Counter-Watch. Yeah. So... Really interesting because I I I think if anyone can sell a new Counter Strike, it's probably Riot, which mm. is a really really weird thing to say in 2020 since uh, Valve hasn't wanted to make games for the longest time. And yes, I'm ignoring Artifact um, or the new Half Life game. Yeah, well that one's VR, so it's it doesn't count. None of us are going to be <laughs> able to play right? it. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> VR doesn't count from Boston over there. That's right. VR doesn't count. Garbage tech of 2020. No, uh, I will enjoy watching someone play that because I can't afford. My wife the other day was like, "Hey, I really want to play Beat Saber," and it's like, "Yeah, yeah, man, I would love to too." But PSVRs are like 300 bucks right now. So, mm-hmm. uh, what did S- we sorry, our oh, sweet spot was like 50 bucks. <laughs> Yeah. yeah i could even be talked into 100 because there's like there's enough titles now at this point that that would probably be okay but normally, the ps5 is right around the corner that normally i would say yes to 100 yeah but it's 2020 and we all know what drops <laughs> yeah. later this year we are locking down spending on not that much but a psvr <laughs> is probably not gonna make the cut yeah yeah uh and uh last news story here ghosts of tsushima gets a release date it is releasing for the PS4, June 26th, 2020. 
I think I got a prediction wrong. <laughs> I I feel like one of my predictions last year was like Ghost of Tsushima. That's coming out on PS5. Like that's a PS5 launch title. Oh, it'll be a PS5 Whoops. launch title, but it will right. also be a PS4 <laughs> game. The Game of the Year Gold Edition, sixty more dollars. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like this, I think Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us Two or Chapter Two, whatever. Um, I think those are going to be really interesting litmus test for sony because microsoft had come out and said we have smart delivery anything that comes out for the xbox one that publishers and microsoft is committing to all of their first party titles doing this they're going to get a patch for your series x and they're going to look dope yeah and that patch is going to be free and whichever CD platform Project Red you, said whichever platform you're on we'll deliver you the right goods for that which they do right now right. with the series x like, yep. there was a discussion between um, a friend of ours, Charlie, and my wife, where my wife, Sea of Thieves, updated, and Charlie was like, oh, it's only 13 gig. That's no big deal. He has mm-hmm. an Xbox One. We have an X. Uh. Our update <laughs> was 45 gigs. Right. Um, and I, I think Microsoft is really showing their cards pretty early, saying like, and CD Projekt Red the same day was like, hey, man we're not putting out a series X version of uh cyberpunk 2077. You just buy the Xbox one version and we're just going to put out a, a patch for it on X mm-hmm. for on series X for free. Um, I think that's really great. I think between Microsoft's sort of one, two punch of everything is backwards compatible. We've ever put out digitally smart delivery plus game pass, like all our powers combined. Um, that's really great. I think when you look at Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us 2, your natural inclination is like, yes, but yeah. <laughs> in three or four months, the next thing is out. So look at what they did. What with do the Last I do, of Us? Sony? Last of Us, the first Last of Us was a late gen PS3 game and they yeah. resold it to you on the fall. <laughs> yep. Just a couple of years later, ready to play it. And I think... I think if Sony really wants to, number one, Sony wants to say anything about the PS5, that would be great, especially for content in the show, because it's a thin year. Um, I think if they want to talk about backwards compatibility... It's a thin year. Do you not have 600 games installed? No, for news. News is a lot of like, uh, conferences are canceled and the Xbox ones, the Xbox Series X looks dope. See you later. Um... But I think if Sony really wants to push backwards compatibility and wants to push some of this stuff, we've been talking about it for a while, like Rainbow Six Siege and Fortnite. Those are probably going to be carried over. Where Fortnite is day one, we've got a big patch, whatever. Um, I want to see Ghost of Tsushima and I want to see Last of Us Part 2, Chapter Mm 2, the the, the sequeling. Um, That running on a ps5 day one where it's like take your disc out put it in your ps5 it runs download it again on your ps5 hey it looks better run smoother 4k whatever 120 frames um i i think if you want to really push the ps5 from a a game and software standpoint i think these are two really solid titles to do it um and we just need to wait for them to say anything (laughs) at all about the console at any point so uh let's move on to questions uh i'm running out of time we'll just do one question here from spencer k on facebook from a week ago so the timeline is important so this question for this week that's kind of tongue-in-cheek but moon might appreciate it is he happy orange cassidy tried last night yes a thousand percent (laughs) did did orange cassidy try he did um oc those of you who don't know, go listen to pre-show stuff to learn all about Orange Cassidy, or just Google the fella. Um, yeah, enjoy the deep dive down that rabbit hole. He's now our favorite AEW, wrestler, and his first singles match was against Pac, who mm-hmm. previously known as Neville in WWE, who is one of the most serious wrestlers you will ever meet. Like, okay, character-wise, very serious, gotcha. no nonsense, no BS kind of person. And from everything I've hit head and all of the highlight reels I've seen, it seems like they put on a, a really, really good match, which shows that comedy does make money. 
That's right. Mm -hmm. And so does laziness. Yes. So does laziness. (laughs) He is apathetic. He's not lazy. That's true. Yes. He just doesn't want to... He doesn't want to overexert himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he did the thumbs up and everything, and I still love it when great. he gets on the top rope when he does the 450 spin and hand motion, and then he just falls off the top rope. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's great. Go, yeah, go Google Orange Cassidy watch the matches. It's it's really great. Uh, all right, that's our episode this week at TVGP.TV. Everywhere to find and follow us on the right-hand side of the page, patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones are numbers. Um... Game Club is still going strong. Uh, this month is another 15-week month, so who, who knows? How long. We've got about two weeks left to, to play Stardew Valley. Uh, uh, Musum asked a really important question in Discord the other day, and I think this is worth talking about uh, for anyone that's worried about Stardew Valley. He was worried about starting it and missing stuff. There's really nothing you can miss in Stardew Valley. And if if you miss anything in like the first two years... Stuff kind of starts repeating around. come year three. Um, so take your time, do what you want, make mistakes on your farm. It's, it's all part of part of living that farm life, man. Hashtag farm life. Um, so go play Stardew Valley. It's on something you own. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Um, we rogue like it. Uh, we're be, st- be starting a brand new game here on the public feed this coming week. Uh, it's a video game that has roguelike elements in it. You, it it's been a trip. It's been a trip. <laughs> this week on the public feed? Yeah. We were still the, like the, two weeks out? We should... Well, maybe it's another week. Keep an eye out for our next one. It's, uh... It's Something a doozy. will drop sometime. Yeah, yeah, if you're a patron, you're already, you're already taking the voyage with us. <clears throat> um, I hate but, you so uh, much. So I know. much. Are. Um, yeah, dude. But uh, Solitarica episode three came out last Wednesday. So this week coming up, it's Solitarica episode this four. This week is. Come and most importantly, the science. Council of Science returns. Mm hmm. Scientists. Science. Uh, all right. I'm getting weird. That's the end of our episode. Yeah, See dude. you all next week. <laughs> I've been weird. Getting weirder. Always, dude. That's right. Uh, Nimp, your titles, please. All right. What's a moodlets? <laughs> your Sim Podcast. I Know I Won't Be Special. Real Life, quote unquote. Headcanon. Don't Be Better Than Me. <laughs> Depression of My Own Making. That Three. one's really good, but might be a little too dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Three word, fourth word, home word. <laughs> interesting. Or hang on. Boston. Interesting. Moon. No, it's not. <laughs> Charm with the calm. I hate you, calming towel. <laughs> All the way to karaoke. Beat down, shakedown, and recalibration station. Yeah, it's so much fun to say. Uh, two from the chat there. They can be only two and past a persuasion check. <laughs> uh, all right, Moon, you? Uh, that devil, daylight savings, or one. <laughs> Conceptually, because I said that word a lot and it wants exactly like that. Uh, what happened to the Sims? Moodlets, question mark. Holly original. Shirts torn off. Great and stupid and insane. Sorry, my fault. Gonna get kicked in the back. Trying to get traction. Could be a Formula One thing, but it's not. Um, (laughs) Screw that egg ship. Slot it all off. Now you know how they feel. That's not a good look. And hashtag farm life. Uh, I have moodlets. What are they? I think what actually said was what's a moodlet. Uh, the calming towel. Uh, because you're an idiot. Because Nip said that I think about five times. Because like, you're an idiot. Because he is. 
Uh, Don't Be Better Than Me, Depression of My Own Making, and That Devil, Daylight Saving. I really like Depression of My Own Making, but... Uh, it's pretty good. I'd mm. be okay with it. Do we throw it to chat? It. Is it too dark, or is it not too dark? It's never too dark. I mean, it's 2020. I don't think... Come on, it can't I don't be that think dark. It's, I don't think it's too dark. <clears throat> I'd be okay with it if you guys are. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Let me just write it All down, because right. I did not have that one down. It gets a circle. Circle takes a square. <laughs> oh, jeez. I think, <laughs> think what you mean to say is it gets a highlight. There you go. Jimbo Jangles gives it the, the thumbs up and says, just right. Mm-hmm. I like it. All right, the ready right side to... of depression. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, ready to go when you guys are. Yep, I'm okay. ready. All right. <clears throat> Starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 646 from March 9th, 2020. Depression of my own making. Virtual me will not be better. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright claim. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, everyone, for watching us. Uh, thank you, a ton of people hanging out with us this week. Thank you so much. We are back every week at the exact same time, so I hope roughly, to see you roughly all Roughly the exact week. same time. Uh, Around, same time-ish. You know what? Yeah, you know because what helps? of daylight savings. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, right. That devil. Say, you, you, you know what helps is when daylight savings happens, and it's we're now on the earlier time for the European folks, too. There you go. Because I used to watch That's live. Right. All the time when I was in the UK until daylight About savings time months. hit, and then I have to stop. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So we hope to see you back uh, next week. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. And we can stop recording.